previously on will it make it to moab is now amphibious and we're gonna go across the lake so here we are on the side of a lake with an amphibious mini jeep now i obviously didn't just find this conversion on the lake side so how is this possible well if you remember nate from the beginning of this journey that helped me do the engine change he said if you ever come up with another stupid idea to let him know and after the engine blew up in episode 3, I sent in this technical drawing, he loved the idea, and I drove up to Salt Lake City where we built the amphibious conversion. I didn't bother filming it because it wasn't really that interesting- ONLY KIDDING EPIC 80s SUPER AWESOME BUILD MONTAGE TIME! CONTENDERS READY! Featuring Ed March from the stupid part of the internet, Nate Gold from Fox Fab Laser and Machinery Incorporated, versus Moronic Engineering Challenge. FIGHT! I'm back See and I've, I've brought chaos again. I'm converting the Jeep to be amphibious. Um, now there's no book on how to build an amphibious mini Jeep, so we're just gonna have to rely on basic mechanical principles and a good old fashioned British plucky spirit. This is gonna work out perfectly, probably. First we assembled the pontoon boat that I'd had sent here, and after admiring the awesome colour coordination that I'd managed, we set about working out how the hell you design and build this thing. What do you envision? Realising my technical drawing might be missing some details, we set about working them out. A crucial piece of information is the centre of gravity of the Jeep. Easiest method to get this? Balance it on a piece of wood on a trolley jack. And when the Jeep requires minimal force to rock up and down, you found the centre of gravity. I'm up it completely. That is the balance point. Science. Next up, buoyancy. I employed the tried and tested method of reading an unverifiable review on Amazon where a guy said he weighed 200 pounds and that made the boat sink four inches into the water. Using horrific maths, that means that 200 pound me plus 400 pound mini jeep will make it sink a maximum of 12 inches. And yes, I know the pontoons are shaped in such a way that the more they sink into the water, the more relative buoyancy they provide, but we're in the USA, and Nate tried calculating the buoyant force the volume of these pontoons would provide not using the metric system. 14 inches, half of 14 is seven, you square that, times that by pi. Three. And the universe exploded, I went cross-eyed, and my tape measure committed suicide. So I just guessed around eight inches. We then decided that four inches of ground clearance below the pontoons was enough to allow me to drive with them inflated, and measured how low the jeep was going to sit in the water with the 8 plus 4 inches. Which was good news for the tyres pushing me along. So that, that should give you pretty deep. Yeah, so I get the maximum traction, but this also means that the water... Level... Yeah, you're, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to be swimming. That's our, that's our water line, right yeah. there. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I'm okay with wet feet, but this also meant I was going to get wet engine electrics. But there's an easy solution for that. I could just get a, like, jet ski coil. Yeah. And a plug cap. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that, couldn't you, Ed? Yeah. Like, not whatever the Chinese found <laughs> in the parts bin. So now we had our design constraints, it was time to design the frame. We quickly abandoned using parts of the original boat frame, as we were pretty sure it would snap under triple its original design weight. So we went thinking of our own custom design from scratch. Initially, each pontoon was going to bolt onto each side. There's a certain distance that we're going to have to go in mm. for the bending moment. But then the genius idea struck. If we're going to go in that far, if you just have the thing just literally span the entire vehicle, so that's strong as fuck. That just makes it, yes. It becomes quite unwieldy and difficult to transport. You've kind of got a perfectly strong boat which can take a shitload of weight, mm. and you're just putting this on top. Of it. Get a two inch bolt, just bolt them on there and that's how you install it. I mean, that's the easiest way. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, decided it. Nate fired up his design software and drew the frame, and then I read you this disclaimer. Warning, if you're an engineer watching this in a place it's unacceptable to get an erection, pause the video now and only continue watching this footage of the frame being laser cut when the coast is clear. Ready? Hit the lights. It's boner time.
work, Nate. Time for some singing. All right. Then we did some welding. Quite a lot of welding. Then we cut some spaces with holes because you some drills is for losers. Then we probably committed a health and safety violation using two forklifts to bolt our frame into place. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> uh, crap the song. Uh, Nate turned the tack welds into permanent welds. And then finally, with the frame complete, we did some very scientific testing by jumping up and down it with broomsticks. And then my camera fell down and pointed at my balls. Balls, 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 balls. We made it strong with gussets on the frame. And to personalise it, I added my name. To complete the job, we added one last bit. Slid in the pontoons to make sure they still fit. Took it apart, gave it a coat of paint, and job complete, and said goodbye to Nate. Yeah, nailed it. Woohoo! <clears throat> uh, calm down, Ed. Back to the video. Well, there it is. Good work. <laughs> what do you think my chance of survival is? Uh, I hope that I see you again, but not on the news. Inspired with confidence, I said goodbye. We basked in our glory one last time. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so... yes, a beautifully made piece of kit. Yeah. Before doing what to you looks like time travel, you see, we actually built this after the engine blew up in episode 3, and then I stashed it by the lakeside the day before I resumed the journey in episode 4, and here we are in episode 6. Gone cross-eyed yet? Good. Welcome to my world. So now time is linear again. Here we are. With 850 miles of off-road behind us, 150 miles of off-road remaining, but first, three miles of water. Right, let's get this show on the road. Uh, lake. First off, we rolled the mini jeep onto the frame yeah. while trying not to disturb the wildlife too much. Meow. Then we attached the frame. So we've got four bolts hanging down. We now have to lift the frame up mm -hmm. and into it, slide it through, and you need a nut and one of those three inch plates. Good thing about mild steel, you can just sort of bend it until it fits. Once attached, David made sure it was perfectly safe and wouldn't fall apart on the lake by wiggling it a bit. I, I wouldn't try it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I would try it. What's the worst gonna happen? Right, so now we're gonna put the pontoons on. Oh, quick correction. In the last video, I said that David was Kyle's son. David is not Kyle's son. And I'm really sorry, David. Uh, back to the video. And after spending too much energy inflating the first pontoon, I got bored with manual labour and decided to try something. That'll do for the moment. So will this work? Can you inflate them with the mini jeep's exhaust? Well, sort of. We tried it at idle, but it was going to take forever. So then we tried high engine RPM. And while it was inflating, doing it was getting a bit warm, it started melting the end of the plastic pump hose I was borrowing. Balls. Well, it would have worked. Ah, well, time to carry on strenuously pumping Willy. Uh, time to... Actually, time to get serious. As Willy faced the water, something dawned on me. Yeah, this thing is totally untested. It has never seen water. And I'm now rolling the dice part the way through a 1,000 mile off-road adventure, and it might now capsize and sink to the bottom of a lake. Journey over. This is a stupid idea. <laughs> right. Is this a point where you say, I'm Ed March and welcome to Jackass? Jackass, I guess. But I'm pretty good at stupid ideas, and I had faith in my engineering skills. Even if others didn't. Was still a bit nervous, though. It's gonna be interesting. So what's the, what's the guess then? You reckon... I think you got about five minutes. Well, then it's gonna sink. We'll do a little recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> place your bets now. Will it work? Oh, I can't stay this serious. It was perfect. Is it floating? Hmm? I'm a boat. You're a moron. I mean, this 
just works, doesn't it? Kind of. What do you mean, kind of? How can it be better than this? I mean, that could not have gone better. Yeah, I'm, I'm loading up and hit the water. Well, I did load up here, but after discovering that my top speed on water was about three miles an hour, I decided to shorten the distance on water from 3.4 miles to 1.2 miles by driving down the road a bit, which gave me the chance to raise the levels of visual stupidity even further. The road section went well, the wind resistance of the pontoon slowed me down a little bit, but that just gave me more time to look at the scenery. And you? The off-road ability though had suffered quite a bit. It now didn't take much of a slope or bump at all to make the pontoon scrape the floor, which filled me with manly dread. <laughs> but eventually the scraping got so bad I had to do something about it. Yeah, okay, I can't actually do this with these pontoons on. This is not working. I'm going to put holes in them. Time to take off my banana-shaped hindrances and put them on top of the pontoon frames. My cellular banular phone. One. Banana jeep. Ring, 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 ring. Banana jeep. <laughs> and we were off, although the pontoons could have done with a bit more securing. Ah! The bananas! I'm grabbing on the tyres. Uh oh. But if I used my right hand to hold up the right pontoon, and my left leg to hold up the left pontoon, the problem was solved, and we were once again able to cope with the terrain as long as it didn't get too extreme. Ah, tits. Not like that. Navigating my way through the maze of trails was proving very tricky, but luckily there was enough mobile internet here to download some extra trail maps, and also use Surfshark VPN! Come on, I've done worse segues than that. Surfshark VPN protects your online privacy by sending all of the data between your device and the internet through a super secure encrypted tunnel. It also changes your IP address and location to one of over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries. This means if I'm in Utah but I want to watch the English Crumpet Eating and Queuing Championships, but I'm not allowed to watch it outside of the UK because we're worried about people stealing our culture, I just fire up Surfshark VPN and then BOOM! I can instantly start watching proper British content like world-class comedies, cooking shows, and footage of it raining a lot. And I also use Surfshark VPN to stop my internet service provider from being able to see exactly what sausage videos I watch online. Using Surfshark means that my city, country, and browsing history aren't part of my online identity. So if you want to protect your online privacy or access content blocked in your location, go to surfshark.com and enter code C90Adventures to get an extra three months protection for free. And if you're still not sure, there's even a 30 day money back guarantee as well. Link in the description, back to the video. But eventually I followed the trails to a boat ramp, fought my way through my arch nemesis of tumbleweeds. Ah, tits. Which surprised me to say the least. Well, fuck me. Made sure all the important things were taken care of. We're gonna want this on film if it goes badly. And then began crossing the lake. After giving myself a little push, I began crossing the lake. Initially, I used the paddle a bit to ensure a correct course and to help me reach top speed faster. In between marveling at my own genius. <laughs> And sometimes my genius is so immense, it surprises even me. It turns. It does. It actually turns with the steering wheel. Yeah, turning right. Turning left. 
This is awesome. And I'm not blowing my own trumpet, because if I could I wouldn't leave the house, but I am genuinely proud of myself for this one. Thank you Nate for helping me personally achieve this previously unseen level of stupidity and engineering prowess. I can't actually believe it's working. Well, I say working. Well, that's the engine done. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's the plug lead. Yes, Ed, I wonder if it is the plug lead. I could just get a, like, jet ski coil. Yeah. And a plug cap. Yeah, yeah. Like, not whatever the Chinese found <laughs> in the parts bin. Oh, man, it's like I'm paddling. <laughs> so whatever the Chinese found in the parts bin doesn't like lake crossings. Ed, you're an idiot. Ah, well, time to start paddling. Only half a mile to go. Which wasn't exactly easy and resulted in the obligatory shot of me taking my clothes off. But after a horrendously long amount of time slowly paddling across the lake, the engine's plug cap dried off, and I was able to start the engine again and resume absolutely smashing it across to the other side. Eventually I made it to a ramp of sorts at the other side, but it was too rough for me to drive out smoothly. The wheels couldn't get enough traction, and the pontoons were beaching. So I just let some air out of the pontoons, and with lots of furious tugging on Willy, we reached the climax of our journey. Really starting to wish I put that jet ski plug cap on there now. Thank you. Honestly, like, I couldn't have done half of this without you. Let's get it you was... up there though. We, we got five, ten minutes. I can't see, it's wet. Yeah. Can we pick this up and just turn it? Oh, it's there. stuck in the mud! <laughs> With the pontoons removed, I was now back to full off-road capability. Well, sort of. The frames were still getting in the way, but as long as you take Willy and smash it hard enough, you, uh, journey complete. Well, I went better than expected. I had a vision of falling off there and oh, roll, roll. I was worried about that too. <laughs> we really gotta go though. And with the sun setting and the crossing taking much longer than I anticipated, Kyle and David had to leave pretty hastily, but they helped me out even further by taking the pontoons and other light things with them so I had much less to stash around here and it wouldn't blow away. Thank you so much. <laughs> Honestly, I yeah, you were absolute lifesavers. In night, every way. Cheers. Honestly, you're amazing. I would have liked the goodbye to have been a bit longer given all they'd done for me, but I knew I'd be seeing them soon again anyway. Which just left me to repack Willy, ready for the land-based journey back to Moab, and then reflect on what I'd just done. Well those guys are awesome. And Kyle really likes the ratchet straps that I've got, they're really cool rhino ones. So when I get his address to go and collect the parts, uh, I'm going to send him a set of four of them. Because I think that's worth it. They're expensive ratchet straps, I'm not a tight ass. <laughs> It's getting a bit chilly, I'm still topless, just with a PFD on. <laughs> I'm on the west side of Lake Powell and I've come over in an amphibious mini jeep. <laughs> I'm a moron. And during the edit, I stumbled across this behind the scenes moment I thought you might like. I didn't realise I'd left this camera recording for half an hour. So here's what it looks like when I'm filming pieces to camera for you. What's the temperature now? Five degrees. Right. I'm going to warm up, I'll see you in a bit. Many moons ago I was so awkward talking to the camera, and I decided to fix that by talking directly to my friends through the lens as if I was making the videos just for them. I just thought you might like to know why I talk to the camera like I do. Right, see you in a bit once I've worked out a plan. Oh and also, no, I don't fake emotions for the camera. <laughs> I do genuinely think what I've just done was really fun and really ridiculous. <laughs>
<laughs> well, the sun is getting quite low, so it's time to head off and find a camping spot for the night. And to continue thinking about what I've just done. <laughs> right, well, time to carry on. <laughs> time to carry on. My problem. Off-roading is compromised by the oar hanging off the front. Almost left my trousers, tripod and tool bag. You can just all live in a heap there. In the morning I returned to the landing spot as I'd heard there was a shop there that sold burritos. With lunch and dinner purchased, I got back in the mini jeep and headed off to stash the amphibious conversion somewhere. Well, after a quick chat. Morning. Morning. Is that yours? Yeah. Holy shit, how does one get a hold of that? You suffer serious head trauma and then you go on the internet and you buy one. Dude, that's awesome. The rail's on the side. So I actually converted it to be amphibious. I drove you it across the lake. son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. Good for you. If I take a photo? Yeah, yeah go for it, yeah. Oh I even God. got a YouTube channel that's documenting this series, so if you want to see a professional, well, semi-professionally edited version of the journey. Just incredible. So, did you rode then? The wheels actually propel it at a, about two or three miles an hour. Dude, but you're kidding me! This thing rocks! <laughs> and you can buy but this stuff. You can buy the Jeep, you definitely cannot buy the amphibious conversion. That was quite the engineering head-scratcher. We had a friend up in Salt Lake who's got an engineering company and a, a tube laser. How cool is this, man? <laughs> Good for you. I was pissing myself laughing as I first entered the water. I'm like, what am I doing? Wow. Well, nice to meet you. Safe journeys. Don't get hurt Cheers. out there. And I'll be fine. Oh my God. Cheers. I'm going to start coveting right now. How fun. <laughs> right. Enough socializing. Time to unbolt the pontoon frame and carry on. <laughs> oh, water's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty good seal. One. Do, 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 do. Well, good news, Nate. You knew it anyway, but your welds are waterproof. And with all the bolts removed, just had to take the frame off. And dismantle. You're a wizard, Harry. Dismantle. Oh, wheel arch. Fuck. Not gonna work, is it, dickhead? Ta da! Unbolted. And I'll just put it against the fence and I'll come and collect it in about a week's time, I think. So, with the frame and paddle safely stashed out of the way, the journey resumed. Rather worryingly, on this section of the route, there were very few off road trails which meant lots of road miles. And I was still 150 miles away from Moab. After just a little bit, my tires were looking pretty rough and I was starting to worry if they'd make it. But while I was forced to take the highway, at least it was very pretty. And there was a little section to save my tires. There was some sand, which went well. The second time. And in fairness, there was actually some off-roading, which was a welcome break. It was very limited, but it was here. Oh, I do like trail riding. And I don't know if I've said this in other videos, but I always ride on trails. This is a road. Soon it was back on the road again, using every opportunity possible to save my tyres. Look, every metre helps, alright? And normally showing you footage from a glorified shopping cart doing 20 miles an hour on the road would be boring, but I'm an excellent filmmaker and storyteller. So here is a very pretty valley filmed by a very shaky camera. Oh, and here is a very striking rock formation that looks way more impressive in real life, I promise as does this mountain range cliff thingy and these three cows. 
but all kidding aside, what lay ahead was excitement beyond my wildest dreams. The road changed colour. And I know most of you currently watching this are in the Northern Hemisphere in summer where it's hot as balls, but when I filmed this it was in the middle of winter and it was cold as balls. Hang on, that doesn't make... Anyway, yes, I decided to try and cook a burrito on the engine because I was freezing my tits off. Balls off, jet. Yeah. Look, I put a burrito on the engine and drove for 40 minutes before stopping to inspect it. How hot is my burrito? Oh, oh I don't know where... Fuck! That could be anywhere. But it's not going to be anywhere, is it, Ed, you dipstick? It's on the road somewhere. I spent two hours backtracking to find the burrito, by which point it was dark. I then consulted the map to work out my route and realised I might not have enough fuel to make it back to Moab off-road, so I had to take a detour on the road for a little bit before getting to a town and checking into a badly animated hotel for the night. Okay, well, fully fueled up, both me and the Jeep. We've got food and loads of petrol, and we've got one more mountain pass to do, which is about 8,000 feet, and then push north into the Red Rocks, and then into the valley where Moab is. Wish us luck. With all the supplies we'd need, we made our way out of town. I ate a thing I bought before eventually hitting the trails again for this final mountain pass on this epic 1,000 mile journey to Moab. I was talking about it being cold. Look, ice. <laughs> Wheel spin. You're lucky that 100 shot of Nas didn't blow the welds on the intake. Progress uphill was still pretty slow, and still required the occasional stop to stretch my legs. <laughs> and as the snow got deeper and deeper, I was really hoping this wouldn't be another pass I'd get stuck on, and have to turn round. But we made it over the summit, and it was all smooth sailing from here. Eventually the sun started setting and it was time to find somewhere to camp, and as luck would have it, I found an established campground with a spectacular view. My luck increased even more, because this campground had a fire pit and wood inside it. Now, I didn't know how long this wood had been there, or if it was wet, so time to begin trying to light it. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, that'll do it. I put the petrol away, I mean, started setting up camp while taking the occasional break to admire the sunset, before sitting down in front of the fire and enjoying another burrito. And as a British person, I then made a cup of tea, and of course I had to stir the tea bag because I'm not a monster. But while looking for something to do this with, I realised I don't really know much about the wildlife. I don't know the plants here, so that might kill me. Right. <clears throat> That's a stick. Probably not poisonous. Hmm. Looks good. 
I then sat down and enjoyed my cup of tea. Honest. Hmm. It's definitely got flavour and body. <laughs> Chunks of fire in it. <laughs> Head torch off. I'm going to watch the stars while I drink that. I'll see you in the morning. Here we go. The final morning of knocking snow and ice off the inside of the tent. Ooh. I haven't seen my reflection today, so I do not know what you're looking at. I probably apologise. Got to pack up and head off and make it to Moab today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the expression of someone who can't actually believe he might make it. Or know how to operate a camera. No, I didn't turn that off. Well, the final miles aren't going to do themselves. Time to get out of the tent, load up Willy, and head off. And yes, I always put my campfires out before I leave. Excuse me, just got to go look at something pretty. Well, this day was going beautifully. As I meandered through these valleys, I was feeling really good. So good, in fact, I even set a new world record for high jump while driving a mini jeep. <laughs> Fuck about. Oh, I'm glad I know the steering wheel. Oh, Willie, you're trying to kill me. Now, I always have a problem trying to convey the scale of this place, because I am in awe here. But luckily, there is something I can do to show you just how vast this scenery is. That's a rock face, and that's a person rock climbing. but eventually the trail ended and it was time for me to get back on tarmac. And to forget that my GoPro was running. For half an hour. In 4K. If you'd like to help me pay for hard drives, you can send PayPal donations to ed.march at c90adventures.co.uk. I'm still stuck doing 20 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure those signs are only put there to antagonize me at this point. And after an exceptionally long amount of time driving, I drove past this sign and realised, oh hang on a minute, that might actually be something interesting, and I can warm up and do star jumps. Let's go look at Newspaper Rock. Newspaper Rock is a series of petroglyphs carved into the rock around 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists still don't really know why they were created or what they represent, but I'm pretty sure this is either graffiti or a premonition of the rocket ship that I used in the last video to travel to Mars. Right. Yep, unfortunately. What is it? It's a Chinese mini jeep that they then wrote US Army over. Gotcha. <laughs> just to cancel out the communism. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it scoots around all right. Just one well, no. No. <laughs> Top speed of 30, but that's like screaming the absolute nuts off it. I mean, those bigger jeeps. No, I have had people who, who own like the like 1940s jeeps and they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you have a good one. I'll give it a go. Cheers. <laughs> what friendly Americans. Right, time to carry up. I've never seen something like that before. <laughs> yeah, there's not many of them. Nice work. Cheers. How long does that tank of gas last you? I've got a range of 210 miles in total. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's amazing. And what, like seven gallons total? Yeah, yeah, exactly that, really? yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> It is not. <laughs> Take it easy. Cheers. Okay, well now those two separate groups of friendly Americans have gone, I can carry- Oh, for fuck! That's so fucking cool, man. <laughs> Cheers. My buddy was telling me you drove all the way from Idaho? Yeah, I got about 950 miles on this trip so far. Fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> Broke the chassis in half, yeah. broke the rear swing arm in half, blew up one engine. <laughs> the thing that did go surprisingly well was going across Lake Powell. So I actually built an amphibious bolt-on jig for it and actually went over the lake. How long is the lake? I did about a mile of it, which is quite a lot when you're sat yeah, on that, say. like half a mile from that direction going, this was a bad <laughs> idea. This was a very bad idea. Do you mind if I take a picture of this? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Cheers, thank you. I've got a YouTube channel if you yeah. want to check out the actual footage of how miserable it is. <laughs> 
been a long old journey. And I'm gonna have one hell of a bath when I get back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, have a safe journey. Yeah, seriously. I'll give it a go. I've only got 50 miles to go. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think he's gonna make it. Nearly there. <laughs> safe journey. Safe Cheers. Journey. Right, I've really got to get moving before any more Americans turn up. And with just 50 miles to go, Willie decided to break down. Um, hello? <laughs> Willie? Got fuel. Fuel tap on. Hello? I mean, if I were to guess, I'd say you're, that was a fuel starvation thing. This is the first time you've actually broken down, I think. So we're not going to count the engine dying in a huge plume of smoke? No? No? no. Okay. Looks like it might be fuel starvation. So what was the cause? Where's that vacuum tap off? Well, the very stiff valve for the vacuum feed to the fuel pump was completely shut. What? Meaning the fuel pump couldn't operate. And no, I have no idea how that happened. Right, well, let's open you. <clears throat> right, you're now open. With the valve now open, I just needed to prime the fuel system. And this is done by removing the vacuum pipe from the inlet manifold, and then you repeatedly suck and blow on the penis pipe until the fuel starts coming out. Give you about 10 suck and blows. Once that's proven, you put the pipe back on the carb and give it 10 more suck and blows. And then... Well, that's fucking weird. If I didn't know any better, I'd say somebody reached inside the engine bay and turned that off, but that's just not a thing. How bizarre. Okay, Willie, we're not going to count that as a breakdown. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Willie just wanted to remind me just how good he's been on this journey. He wasn't meant for this. But eventually, the LaSalle Mountains appeared over the horizon, and Moab is at the base of those mountains. Nearly there. Time to take the final trails. As I got closer to Moab, there was an artificial tumbleweed. Somebody's birthday! Well, I have a thing where I pick up one piece of trash every day, so that's that. And there was a rock with a hole in it. And then there's not much else to report, really. I slowly made my way through the last miles of trails before I crested the final hill and entered the valley that has Moab in it. And I couldn't believe I'd finally made it. After 1,000 miles, Willie and I were actually here. But as I finished this last trail and was then forced onto tarmac, it just didn't seem right to stay on a smooth surface and end the journey like this. So I turned down one last gravel road and took a moment to say thank you to the faithful steed that brought me all these miles and all this fun. Well, Willie, I can't believe we're actually gonna make it. I didn't think you had it in you. And I'm sorry for snapping your chassis and swing arm and arm for blowing up your engine. Thank you for your service. And thank you for watching. If I've even slightly inspired you to get out there and have your own silly adventure, then another mission of mine is complete. Get out there and have fun, you won't regret it!
why yes you can buy this t-shirt on my website and you can also buy this usb stick in the shape of the mini jeep that contains all six episodes of the mini jeep series and you can also clip pontoons onto it <laughs> it's so cute uh i took ages designing this but uh yes awesome anyway we'll get to that in a second thank you so much for watching uh i really hope you enjoyed the musical piece that i filmed to uh sign off on this series and yes i was carrying inflatable musical instruments on the adventure but uh, honestly thank you so much for watching it's taken 12 years but this youtube channel has finally got to the point where i have now quit my job as an engineer and this is what i do making videos for you and uh yes this is just it's awesome and the comments that you guys leave uh, a lot of them saying that you hold this series and my videos in the same regard as like top gear and the grand tour is uh mind blowing to me and it actually like really means a lot to me because the amount of effort I put in but the fact that you even hold my stuff in the same light as multi-million dollar productions is just absolutely mind-blowing but uh speaking of multi-million dollar operations if you would like to help fund uh me and Nate buying a 20 year old Honda quad bike we're going to take all the 4x4 uh drivetrain out of it an engine and we're going to like stuff it into Willy at <laughs> Uh, to turn him into 4x4 and to give him a lot more power. Uh, if you want to help fund things like this, then you can buy this Will It Make It To Moab t-shirt, which was designed by my friend Sean, and she did an excellent job of it. And it features me on the water, on Willy, genuinely wondering, will it make it to Moab? Um, of course, you now know uh, it did, but uh, I <laughs> definitely didn't know if it would. But this is what really actually means something to me. This is the USB stick in the shape of Willy, and it contains all six episodes of this series in full high bit rate 4K. So all of the GoPro footage and the drone footage looks stunning rather than what YouTube does to it. And you can also clip the pontoons onto it. And this is not a toy right <laughs> this is a model i've completely designed this completely myself from scratch i actually took all measurements of willy and i shrunk it down to 120th scale so this is a complete scale model complete with the pontoons what that means is it's not a toy don't do this but if you must um take the usb stick out the usb chip out of it and it does actually float <laughs> because it is a perfect scale model uh when you buy it it comes as all its component pieces and it's a kit that you assemble and it will come with a proper assembly video to show you how to put it together which isn't the video that i filmed for this which i took five minutes ago which is me just sat on the floor with the pieces badly lit with table lamps that I definitely didn't buy because they look like anal beads. Uh, <laughs> this is not how you sell things. Um, but yes, uh, this actually means a lot to me because um, YouTube has still never turned a profit, has only ever lost its owner's money. Spotify also has never generated a profit. If or when they turn off YouTube, these videos will disappear. Uh, Disney is doing it with movies actually on its service now. They never got released on DVD and they've taken them off for the streaming service. They do not exist anymore. So this means a lot to me because if you buy one of these, you get all six episodes and they are yours. There's no DRM, there's no copyright. You can put them on your media server. You can put them on your phone to watch on the plane. Um, they are yours. And that means that some faceless corporation can't randomly decide that you don't ever get to see them again, which could happen uh, if I keep talking about anal beads. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, yeah, this means a lot to me. Um, if you buy the kit, it comes with all of this. Uh, you don't need any glue. There's a video that shows you how to put it all together. But uh, yes, if you want to help support future videos happening, then uh, by buying t-shirts and these things, or you can send PayPal donations to ed.march at c90adventures.co.uk. Um, I was actually being serious earlier on. Um, oh, all of my uh, hard drives, and I can't use. Uh, I've got to throw all of my solid state ones away because there's a bug with SanDisk ones. So I've now got to spend another $500 on hard drives. Just to give you an idea. So yes, if you want to help support future videos happen, you want to make help make Willy four-wheel drive and go a lot faster, there's also a ridiculous Honda 90 adventure in the works, then this is how you do it. So thank you so much for watching. 
and uh yeah this is just this is brilliant um proper like homegrown cinema and filmmaking means a lot to me uh i've only ever made these videos just how i wanted to make them with my sense of humor and i didn't care if anybody really wanted to watch them because i wanted to stay true to myself rather than just produce the 5000th marvel movie so uh thank you for uh, helping this happen <laughs> i'm getting a bit emotional now um yes uh go to the shop and um uh, i will see you on the next adventure cheers <laughs>